Glad you're streaming with us today. You know, the Earth needs healthy oceans to survive, right? They feed us and they regulate our climate and provide most of the air that we breathe. So during this Climate Week, we are turning our attention to the critical issue of ocean health. This climate focus in New York City is coinciding with the United Nations General Assembly. So climate change activists are taking the opportunity to get their message across to world leaders. And one of those activists is Danny Washington, a science communication and Ocean Race Ambassador. This week, she presented the Universal Declaration of Ocean Rights before the members, which aims to set out a way of governing the ocean to ensure it's properly protected. Washington is also an ambassador for the ocean race. Now in its 50th year, sailors race through 32,000 miles of the planet's most treacherous oceans in an eight month long race around the world. And in the last decade, ocean health and conservation has become a priority during that race. Danny Washington joins me now, along with a member of the winning team of this year's race, Sailor Charlie and Wright. Great to have you both. Danny, before we talk about you know, the race, tell us just a little bit about the Universal Declaration of Ocean Rights that you presented at the UN. What was the goal here and how do you think it was received? Well, thank you so much, Kira. It's great to be on today and to be speaking on behalf of the ocean and the ocean race. The bottom line is the ocean sustains all life on planet planet Earth. It's the blue heart of our planet. And technically, it doesn't need to be saved. We just need to recognize that it has inherent rights and do the actions that will protect it. So at the Ocean Race Summit presenting ocean rights, it was held on Monday at the UN headquarters during the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly. And we brought together scientists, as well as world leaders, indigenous leaders, and youth advocates that all care about the future of our ocean, because ultimately is the future, the future of humanity to rely on the health of the ocean. And so through this summit, we were able to have great conversations, make major announcements, but most of all, galvanize our leaders to push forward with this concept of a universal declaration of ocean rights. And thanks to the government of Cabo Verde, the West African island nation, they will be presenting an omnibus resolution next week with this concept, with the basic principles of what a document like this could look like. It will be a journey going forward to, to ultimately create this document, but we need everyone to join us in this fight and, and stand up and speak up for the ocean because the ocean is life. Well, you've been the ongoing host for the Ocean Race Summits. How do you think that the race has evolved into a call to action You know, for ocean health and conservation? Well, the ocean race is much more than just a sporting event. This is an event that challenges human ingenuity and, and, and pushes us to the limit. And so when we watch our sailors on the water doing this worldwide race, we know that they're doing it in a place that is so special and so irreplaceable for our survival here. And being able to be a part of an organization that continues to prioritize the idea of regenerating our planet and restoring ocean health uh, makes me so proud. And I've worked with them for the past three years elevating this message for the ocean. And through our partners, 11th Hour Racing, we've been able to create a sustainability program, a robust program that includes education, as well as science, where the sailors are collecting data on board while they're racing, which is incredible. And so this baseline data is then sent to different government agencies and labs to be analyzed so that we can understand what's going on in some of the most remote places on our planet. Sailors like Charlie. Charlie, this is the first year in the race's 50 year history that an American team has won. You were part of that team. Uh, this is one of the longest and toughest professional sporting events in the world. Just tell me what this race means to you. Thanks for having us uh, here today. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, for me, this race has been my Mount Everest. Um, it's been a goal of mine for the better part of a decade. And um, so to get it over the line this year and um, in Genoa, where the race finished, was just a real dream come true. And to be able to do it with a partner like 11th Hour Racing, whose um, goals and ambitions are so aligned with ours as sailors, you know, centered around ocean health and making the marine industry a more sustainable place. Um, you know, that's really just the cherry on top. And Charlie, you have seen more of the ocean than most people. Uh, what state do you think, or, or, or I guess, how do you see our oceans now and, and what specifically needs to change? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we are legitimate canaries in the coal mine, if you will. I mean, we get out there on the high seas and we see things that other people aren't capable of seeing. Um, 
you know, I've been around the world three times now. And uh, the first time for me was really an awakening, <laughs> if you will, uh, to some of the troubles that are facing our oceans. Um, you know, the second time was about sharing that message um, with other people. And now this third time, um, you know, it's about coming up with tangible solutions because, you know, the ocean was around way before we were, and it's going to be around way after we leave. Um, and we only get one shot um, at righting our wrongs. And, um, you know, the time for that is certainly now. Um, we see a lot of things out there. We see a lot of marine debris. We see changing weather. Um, but unfortunately, it's the things that we don't see, um, you know, the rise of temperature, the acidification. Th those are the real big worries. And I think that's what people need to wrap their heads around. How incredible. I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact you've sailed around the world three times, but you've turned that into being an advocate as well, which is pretty amazing. Charlie, Danny, you're both incredible people and doing so much uh, for, for just our environment and our world. Appreciate you both so much. And Charlie, again, congratulations. Danny, thank you. Thank you so much, thank you guys. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.